So, Mercury Plains is a straight-to-DVD film from January. And normally, I don't bother with these at all. But this one piqued my interest when it was Scott Eastwood. And it wasn't the story that got me interested. I didn't even read what the plot was. I just felt like I had to see it because not only is this the second film with Scott Eastwood and a January film, but it's the second time where the poster made him look like Clint Eastwood. Diablo made him look like a Western Clint Eastwood. This one makes him look like Dirty Harry a little bit. I mean, look at it. With the way he's holding the magnum, the actual magnum, the gunshot bullets to a window looking thing on the cover. It looks like it's trying to imitate Dirty Harry a little, doesn't it? So, Mercury Plains, what is it about? What is it about? What the hell is this movie about? Well, let me tell you, Scott Eastwood plays a young man still living with his parents. Well, his stepfather and mother he's living with. Apparently, there's no jobs in town for him. So he has no job. He just sits around watching TV. And he has nothing to do in his life. He's pretty much a bum in this movie. One day, his friend comes around and is like, Hey, we should go to Mexico. There's no real reason for it, but they go to Mexico anyway. His friend ditches him, and suddenly he gets involved with a group of vigilantes somehow. That's, that's the premise of Mercury Plains. Pretty much. Also, this band of mercenaries, this band of people that are supposedly taking it out against the cartel, is doing some really shady business. So it's trying to be Sicario a little bit, maybe a little bit like Cartel Land. But the problem is, Cartel Land and Sicario are such amazing films, and this looks like a complete, just utter piece of crap. Again, this is pretty much my fault for expecting anything from a straight-to-DVD film, but I had low expectations anyway, because I just wanted to see just how bad this movie might be, because it has a 0% for the audience in Rotten Tomatoes. Granted, there's only been like 12 people that saw it so far that I've saw, but still, a 0% this early, that's pretty bad. Not even Norm of the North has a zero from the audience. It has a zero from critics, but it doesn't have a zero from audience. That's... <laughs> what? Okay, so let's start with the good. For one, there are moments in this film where it feels like, okay, the director had some vision, the people creating this story had some vision, and they tried to tell it in a way that's like, okay, we care about this movie. It feels like there's some care put into the production of this film. Whether it be because of some certain shots that are really good, the settings, or some of the characters, there's some sort of love put into this film, and I think that's obvious. Also, I feel some of the action sequences are handled really nicely. It's almost like the opposite of Diablo when it comes to the action sequences, because Diablo's action sequences at the very beginning of the film were almost utterly completely cheap and just crappy and they felt like and it felt like it saved up for the big climax of the film which actually looked decent and actually looked like okay they tried and it looked good but when it comes to mercury planes it feels like all the action sequences towards the beginning and the middle of the film are handled nicely handled competently actually handled with care and then, the very end of the film, while the concept is good, there are moments in the last action sequence of the film that feel stupid and dumb. I'm like, certain things are like, okay, I see how that works. That actually is kind of cool towards the end. But there's something like, like the main villain suddenly riding into the area in a, on a horse. There's, <laughs> it just looked ridiculous. And I thought Scott Eastwood did a pretty decent job. He wasn't trying to be Clint Eastwood here, so he could actually be himself. And I thought he gave a little bit of life into this characterless person. 
Like, this person really is a bum. He doesn't really have any objective in life. He doesn't really... He just sort of goes with the flow. There are moments where he does refuse and actually goes against authority, like a rebellious teen, but sometimes in a way where it actually feels like, okay, he has some morals. And so... Like, the character is ultimately bland, but there's some interesting things about him where it could be a good character if handled right. And Scott Eastwood does a decent job with that character. He brings as much life to the character as he can possibly can. So I do have to make note of his effort, and I thought he did a better job in this than he did with Diablo, which, like I said, like I said in my Diablo review, the first 50 minutes of it, he was really bad, but then the last 40 minutes of the film, while it was cliched, he did well. In Mercury Plains, he just ultimately does pretty decent throughout. I'm interested to see what character he plays in the Suicide Squad, because I know he's there. I saw him in the trailer. I saw brief, two brief clips of his face. One of them, him, one of them is when he bumps his fist with some other character that I couldn't quite tell who it was. Now, what's the bad of this film? Absolutely everything else. The story is pretty bad. Nothing really interesting, and nothing interesting with the characters either. It also was quite confusing as well. Like, I didn't really understand what the vigilantes were supposed to be doing. Like, I'm sure it explained it in a way, but there's times when they're about to go on some sort of mission, and so there's a briefing before, and the briefing absolutely tells us nothing. Like, I didn't, like, during the briefing, I didn't understand what their mission was, and I just watch it play out, I'm like, okay, that was explained in the briefing, I don't remember any of this explained at all, but I guess it would be boring if you got the briefing explained and then it actually play out, but the interesting thing would be to hear the plan out in the briefing and then see how it goes to shit later on when it's actually happening. And I knew the vigilante group was not going to be what they're supposed to be. I knew there was going to be something that makes our main character realize something is completely wrong, but it does it in a way that's not subtle at all. Like, it's like blatantly obvious that they're doing something really wrong and really bad within the first mission. Like, it is blatantly obvious. There's like no subtlety whatsoever. And it's funny because it's like the second or third mission before Scott Eastwood start realizing Oh, something's really off about this whole thing. And ultimately, the movie reminded me of Black Hat. <laughs> it did. It reminded me a lot of Black Hat. A totally different story, totally different movie. In a way, I had similar feelings for both movies. I thought the action sequences were handled well in Black Hat, as well as Mercury Planes. But the in-between time towards action films were completely boring and utterly confusing in both movies. Also similar to both movies, the love interest, the lo this love, the romance subplot is awful. I can't believe I'm going to be saying this, but Black Hat did a better job at having chemistry and having a romantic subplot than Mercury Plains. And that is really, really hard to say because Black Hat was awful at that. And Mercury Planes, just like Black Hat, it comes out of nowhere. But at least in Black Hat, you could see it coming. It just happens way too fast. In Mercury Planes, it comes out of nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. And not only does it come out of nowhere, it's completely forgotten about. Literally, in Mercury Planes, he starts dancing with a girl pretty much because he's forced to. And then the next scene, that makes him like her for some reason, even though he had no part of the dance, he just sort of just stood there while she danced around him. Then they have a sex scene right when they meet up again. And then right after that sex scene, nothing about it ever comes up with that romantic subplot. It's, it makes it seem like, oh, let's just throw in this romantic possibility of a subplot just randomly, and then just throw it all away, making it completely and utterly meaningless. It did have many moments that are just so bad that they were really funny and entertaining to me. Like, there's this one scene where Scott Eastwood is in a bar, 
And this scene was actually handled quite well, surprisingly. And it's when he realizes that his friend has ditched him. And this guy comes up to him, he's like, Hey, your friend had sex with my wife, you need to pay me $200. This scene was actually handled pretty well. Scott Eastwood was, well, he had had, had a few beers, this character. And you can see it laid out. He wasn't drunk enough to actually have drunk all those empty bottles. But he had this I don't care attitude that actually worked well in this scene. But then that whole scene just becomes laughable once the fight starts happening. Like the sound effects for him hitting him with the bottle and then he, him getting hit himself were just so laughable. Didn't even break the bottle, which I guess that's commendable a little bit because hey, it's always broken and it might be a little harder to break when you smash it against a person's head. I don't know, I've never done it because I don't do that sort of stuff. But then it doesn't make it seem like it's good enough to be impactful and actually look like it hurts them. Because it doesn't break, it just goes ding. And then literally, the, the, when he gets hit himself, the thud is so soft that it almost feels like a boing, you know, like, just like, they should have just had a sound effect saying ding, boing, or something really terrible. It's just mind-boggling. And then there's a lot of really crappy dialogue throughout the film that is just like, really? Because there's moments where it's just so straight up and to the point where it feels like humans don't talk like this. Th this doesn't seem right. And then other times where things are explained in a way, like, like the villain's monologues throughout the film, there was nothing to him. Like, it felt like they were trying to explain some things, explain, explain his psychosis and why he's this way and what the meaning of life is and stuff, and it just came off as cheesy and just meaningless. Like, like things that were meant for the trailer, but not meant for the movie itself. So there are moments where it's so bad it's funny, but it's so far and few between that it's not... I can't recommend it to people that want to go in there picking apart a movie and having a fun time picking, a, picking it apart. Because it is quite boring throughout. I don't think I'm going to waste my time anymore with Mercury Planes. I am going to give it one star. Still not bad enough to be a half star for me. And I think it's just because of the action sequences and Scott Eastwood's performance being decent and good enough to say, hey, it's not quite bad enough to be half a star, but it's not good enough to be a star and a half either. So, did you even see Mercury Planes? Have you even heard about it? And if so, go ahead and comment. As always, this is Bruce Gifford, and this was just my opinion.